Good morning, everybody. Buenos días a todos. Muchísimas gracias por estar aquí. Veo muchas caras conocidas, eh, también caras nuevas. Muchísimas gracias por seguir apoyando año a año a la Fórmula E y estar con nosotros aquí en este comienzo del campeonato en la temporada 9. Eh, muchos medios de la prensa internacional. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming over to Mexico for the start of uh, the new season of FIA Formula E. And uh, we have a great panel today for this press conference. Uh, and, and this is the way that it's going to work. We're going to ask a question and then the answers in, uh, both in English at first, one each, and then we open the floor for questions both in uh, English and Spanish. Okay, so be prepared. And uh, okay, let's start with the, uh, the, big, the big boss, huh? Alejandro. <laughs> The, the, the power, you know, behind the power, exactly, but let's start with number one. Um, I mean, you personally, Alberto, uh, Julia, everybody as founders of, of the Formula E Championship must be feeling very, very proud of uh, seeing this Gen 3 car and being less than 24 hours uh, away from really starting the uh, competitiveness of, of this uh, marvelous machine. Um, but you personally, how proud are you of uh, seeing this after so many years of, of uh, development of the technology and Formula E still in the way uh, for EV development? Well, thank you and uh, hello everyone. It's great to be back uh, in Mexico, like every year. You know, it's one of my favorite races. And uh, this race is very special. Very special because we are going to race with the Gen 3. And that's a moment that, of course, makes me personally very, very proud. I want to start by thanking a lot of people that have been key to deliver this Gen 3. We will see tomorrow. We have done some testing. Of course, the FIA, our supplies, Hanko, Spark, um, and many others that have contributed to the creation of this Gen 3. And you know, for me especially, because together with Alberto, we, we started Formula E uh, almost, I don't know, 11 or 12 years ago, or the idea. It's incredible that we come to the Gen 3. The first car was two cars. We couldn't do the race with one car. So if you would remember, we had to do two cars, had to change car to finish the race. That was not the idea. Gen 2, the objective was to do it only with one car. So we couldn't really focus on making the car that we really wanted. We couldn't be incredibly ambitious in other areas because we had to just make a car that would finish the race in one car. And we did it. And Gen 2, I think, delivered fantastically for Formula E. And then here comes Gen 3. And you know, in Gen 3, maybe me, because I'm a bit more, um, I don't know, how would I define it, more risk taker or more, have more of a, a I don't know, idealistic view. I love the process of Gen 3. And of course, you will have heard around the paddock uh, how difficult it is, how many challenges there are, uh, this doesn't work, the other thing is difficult, the other thing is tricky. That's what Formula E is about, about the challenge, about really making things difficult for the ones that participate in the championship. Because we have the best people, the best experts uh, in electric cars and they have to race to the challenge. And I think that's what we're going to see tomorrow. We're going to see the first race with a car that really is the first car that we can really show the true ambition of the ABB for the championship. Uh, our true vision. Of course, then we'll have Gen 4, Gen 5. I think Formula E has an incredible future of development technology. But the car that we're going to see tomorrow is the first car that really reflects the ambition of the ABB for the championship. So, super proud. I know Alberto is super proud. FIA also, they've done an incredible job. I know, luckily, I don't have to deal with the day-to-day -day problems. <laughs> they do. That there are many challenges. And tomorrow, for me, makes it even more exciting this weekend. You know, worrying and exciting sometimes can go together. Uh, but I think we are up for a fantastic show and, and a demonstration of what Formula E and what the championship, like the ABB Formula Championship, FIA ABB Formula Championship, can do for electrical technology. Awesome. Alberto, um, 
this is the seventh, uh, seventh time that uh, Formula E uh, races in Mexico City. Uh, it's a particular country and a uh, particular fanship, you know, and, and, and the passion here is really amazing. How, you've been so many years in racing, in motorsport, before Formula E. Have you ever seen this uh, type of passion anywhere else in the world? Well, first of all, what English is right now? In English now, but in English now, yeah. <laughs> Uh, first of all, thank you, uh, all of you, for being here. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be in Mexico. Mexico, as you said, is very passionate with almost everything, but especially in motorsport. And we have a lot of things to uh, uncover today. The new car, you know, three new teams, three new drivers, new cities. I mean, the championship is probably in a better position than it's ever been in. And whatever place in the world uh, that Mexico to, uh, to showcase all that. And uh, in front of these hopefully 50,000 people that is going to show up here uh, tomorrow um, with that passion, with that belief in motorsport. Uh, I've never seen a car like this one almost anywhere in the world. And uh, that was the main decision in order to, uh, to start the season here. You know, we, we really wanted to, um, to feel that. You know, it, it's so important for. Uh, not only as the promoter of the championship, but uh, the teams, the, the, especially the drivers, to feel that love, you know, walking down this path, you know, behind the garages, where probably we're the only motorsport property in the world that gives free access to the people to uh, be chatting with the drivers, you know, and, and, and be meeting with them and asking them for pictures and uh, for autographs. And that makes it so special. And then, also, what can we say about that also? You know, when, when those 22 cars will, uh, will pass by tomorrow and, and have that crowd of uh, approximately 28,000 people cheering and, and shouting and, and loving what they're seeing, I think it's a very special moment and, and that's the main reason why we're here uh, launching the debut. Tickets are sold out again this year. Of course, uh, we, we don't have any doubt at all. Uh, at the beginning, it was a little bit more challenging. We were an unknown uh, property. Uh, you know, with years to come, you know, it was like kind of, I would call it easy, but uh, uh, again, the passion for motorsport of, of the Mexicans uh, actually made it quite easy this year. You know, we, uh, we are totally sold out, not only on grandstands, but also on the different tiers of quality that we have. And uh, hopefully, we'll have a crowd of over 50,000 people here. Also. Julia Baye, in charge of sustainability at uh, AFA Formula E. Uh, sustainability from the very first race uh, was at the heart of the uh, championship's uh, mission. Uh, can you elaborate on the initiatives of uh, Formula E here in Mexico? It's a very particular country, uh, very important in the environmental and uh, with uh, social issues as well. Thank you very much. First of all, it's great to be here. Uh, obviously, all the support from sustainability for New Mexico is very, very special. Um, and we've been really building that relationship with Mexico City and the government in Mexico year on year since we've been racing since the very beginning here. Two projects that are very, very special to us. One, the fact that we have uh, this relationship with UNICEF. Formerly has a global partnership with UNICEF uh, coming across all their climate related work for the Safe and Healthy Environment Fund. But this materialized in a very specific way in Mexico because we are working with uh, Mexico to finance a project that is called Las Casitas de Agua y Energía. And this is uh, only thanks to, uh, I mean, from LA, because this is a project that is only due to the fact that only is investing with uh, UNICEF in Mexico. We've been privileged to go on site, meet those children in the, lo in the local communities, in Guerrero states, uh, in Mexico City and Mexico states. And we've seen the impact that having access to clean water gives to those children in their, in their local communities. It's important to know that roughly 60% 60, 60 of children don't have access to clean water in their day-to-day -day schools. So it makes a huge difference for them to be able to study, for their, for their health, and also for their parents and other communities together. It's also fantastic to see that so far this has brought a positive impact to more than 8,000 children. And again, having like the wider reach of the local communities. The other very important thing that we have here is this very specific program that is called Girls on Track. 
Girls Tracking is a program that we share with FIA and huge, huge thanks again uh, for this because the whole point is to promote and develop uh, um, motorsport and all technological topics adoption in like, the, the women, younger female communities. Because we know it's not less, it's not as popular uh, amongst uh, young girls. And we are actually like, using the platform of the championship, the fascinating environment that we built here to showcase to girls that actually this is super exciting, they can have fantastic careers. We have a series of workshops with our partners and they are showcasing the kind of basic jobs that young girls can have and project themselves. Obviously, there are also electric cars, so they can test their driving abilities and potentially picture themselves becoming a driver, uh, I mean, tomorrow on our, in our garages. But it's also something really unique to us and we are very proud to be hosting those on track today, actually. We have uh, the girls, 120 girls today on set with us. Awesome. Uh, Pablo Martino. Great to see you. Um, as delegate, uh, Formula E delegate for FIA, uh, you've been working hands-on uh, with uh, Julia, with Alberto, like Alejandro was saying, um, on, on the efforts of developing this Gen 3 car, the most uh, efficient, fastest, uh, and uh, most sustainable uh, electric racing car ever built. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the, uh, the features, the technical features, and also any updates on the uh, sporting format this season? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so first taking a takeover on, on the technical aspects on how the car was accepted uh, from the beginning. So the conception of, of the Gen 3 from the beginning was done together with Formula E, of course. So Formula E together with FIA, it, it set the basis of, of a new car, of a total new car that needs to be built up around the core basis of Formula E that they are racing in, in city circuits. So that uh, creates a car that is, uh, apart from the uh, high-end technology that it carries this car, it was a car that from the century was need to be smaller, lighter, and faster. So this is basically the three key aspects that were taken into consideration when the car was built up from the beginning, and it uh, ends up with, with the car that you have seen or that you see here in 24 hours time. It's a car that, uh, from a spectator's point of view, it's amazing to see it. The car uh, uh, works much more than the, than the Gen 2 car. They are smaller, so this can provide much more overtaking. The cars are lighter, they can go faster, they are more performing. So basically, this has been uh, uh, built up in, in order to get into a position that the car will be much more exciting to see than, than the previous generation. <laughs> uh, in technical aspects, so uh, basically... Can I interrupt you there? Very good friend of mine, Flavio Briatore from Formula One, who never said anything good about any of our cars. When he saw the Gen 3 going, he said, finally you have a car that looks like a race car. But so, <laughs> that's that, that absolutely true as well. So basically, in terms of performance and in terms of numbers, the car has been uh, reduced the, the weight in more than in almost 60 kilos. So that's a really big uh, figure because it's almost 50 for a, for a race car, so it's quite impressive. Uh, uh, the car has also an increase of power. It's increased from the 250 kilowatt of, uh, of, of power up to 350 in attack mode, so that this is almost 500 uh, horsepower if you want to do the conversion to, to the thermal combustion engines. So yeah, basically there is a lot of work that it's been uh, key, been key uh, topic. And in terms of sustainability also, has been taken also in a really big consideration. Uh, the car, in almost 50% of the energy that the car will use during a race is regenerated by the car itself when braking. So this is an amazing figure. You have to understand that you are coming from a figure around 15 to 20% depending on the races. So this has been almost double for Gen 3. This is, uh, in the technology that this implies is uh, it's really amazing compared uh, with the we can see in, in normal road cars. Uh, so yeah, basically we have been focused all our efforts on the technical side of this. And then transferring that to the sporting side, we have also made some changes in order to improve I mean, the, the championship a little bit more appealing for spectators and more interesting. You know that Formula is always special in terms of uh, format. Last year we did uh, together with Formula E, an exceptional change on the qualifying format that does do it super good to everyone. Uh, really exciting, and I think it's one of the best uh, qualifying formats that exists anywhere. 
and now we are also doing some changes in the sporting format of the race. We are coming back to a format of laps. We think that it's more a racing format that can be easily explained to everyone. We are still keeping that uh, interesting figure of the added time. Of course, we are transforming that to added laps. But this is something that is unique in Formula E, as well as the attack mode. So, uh, we are trying to make more appealing the attack mode for the strategy of the drivers. So that's why we are providing different uh, possibilities to the drivers in order to activate this extra power during the race. So yeah, looking forward to a really good event in Mexico. It's always nice to be in Mexico. It's a beautiful country. They are they speak Spanish as, as, <laughs> as, as you do. So, so yeah, looking forward to it, to be honest. And the beautiful thing about the uh, Gen 3 car is going to get better and better as the, uh, the championship and the season develops uh, this year. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be great.